It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, David Yurnak, and he's with Tron, NFTs in the future. So Dave, come on out. All right, let's give him a big hand. Love your haircut. Thank you. Hi there, everyone. I'm Dave Yornak, the Director of Ecosystem Development and Blockchain Strategy at Trondow. So I'm here today to talk with you a bit about the adoption of NFTs and how they're going to be integrated into everyday life of consumers. So, but before we get into that, I want to talk to you about Trondow. A lot of people aren't too familiar with Tron. We started in Asia and we're only recently moving into the US. But Tron DAO is actually the fastest growing blockchain in the world. We have over 95 million accounts. And by the end of summer, we'll have over 100 million accounts. Uh, we're, but really, beyond being a layer one, we're a diversified Web3 company. We have a stable coin you might have heard of called USDD. It's the first over-collateralized, decentralized, algorithmic stablecoin in the world. Uh, we have a NFT marketplace, Ape NFT, um, that we just launched in April, and it's rapidly gaining traction. Uh, additionally, we have cross-chain solutions, and we have the world's largest file-sharing solutions. So with that, let's get into some NFTs. So how it started, how it's going. So, who here owns an NFT? Okay. Who bought theirs before, or who bought any NFT before 2020? Okay. Did anyone buy one before 2017? You can't, you can't kind of buy one. <laughs> All right. That, that, about 2017, 2016, 2017. All right, there you go. So, but... NFTs actually started uh, as colored coins on the Bitcoin network, right? And they, they were nice, but they didn't have much utility. So they quickly gave way to other things without much utility, but were kind of cooler. Um, crypto punks, crypto kitties, those types of things. And that, that kind of led to NFT mania. Right? From 2017 through 21, 2021, everyone had to own an NFT. And it kind of peaked in 2021 when Beeple sold his creation the first 5,000 days for over $69 million. But since then, NFTs have been downhill. Sales have really dropped. Um, and really, just last week, NFT sales were really back to levels... Um, not seen since before all the excitement and the mania. So and if the fall in NFT sales doesn't worry me. It doesn't worry me at all. And why? Because NFTs have utility. They have commercial utility, they have consumer utility, and they're going to be around, they're going to be here to stay. Right? We're going to see many, many industries adopt NFTs, and they're going to be widely used. But how do we get from here, where we are now, to where NFTs are part of everyday life? Well, at Tron, we believe the integration of NFTs into daily transactions and processes will be led by institutions as they recognize the benefits of NFTs and use NFTs to reinvent their business models. And as they do that, consumer adoption will follow. All right, so what's that process going to look like? So this is how we believe it's going to play out, right? So traditional companies uh, are really going to lead the way. And I know for a lot of us, uh, you know, in the crypto world, we don't like to see traditional companies coming in into our space, into our stuff. But it's happening. You know, if you walked around the conference uh, over the past few days, you know, one thing that jumped out at me at least was the number of traditional companies here trying to figure out NFTs, trying to apply NFTs to their problems, right? And it's going to happen. It's, they're going to be leveraged by traditional companies. And as traditional companies integrate them and apply them to solve their problems and transform their business models, 
They're going to be used more by consumers, and consumers are going to get comfortable using NFTs in their daily transactions. And that comfort is going to lead to increased use, and use will beget more use, right? And soon, NFTs won't be something cool and different. They're just going to be how business is done, right? But we're still a long way off from there. Uh, of course, you never know. So let's talk about the industries that can use NFTs because there's so much more than just art and pixelated pictures. And this is, uh, this is a pretty big list of industries that can use NFTs, and it's probably missing a bunch. But everyone from social media to healthcare to metaverse to fashion to financial services has multiple NFT use cases within it. Right, the, the use cases of NFTs are, I don't want to say unlimited, but right now there's probably more that we don't know than that we do know. So, it wasn't something I said, was it? No. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, they, they, they are really, um, the use cases are uh, myriad, and we've yet to explore all of them. But, we're starting to see green shoots of them being used by companies. So from Wall Street to Main Street to travel to fashion to entertainment, we're seeing NFTs being integrated into daily transactions, right? So when I say Main Street, I'm talking about uh, home mortgages and how NFTs and crypto are being leveraged to en enable really a variety of real estate use cases, right? So, you know, my role as uh, in ecosystem development, I come across a lot of uh, early stage companies that are trying to get off the ground. And, you know, over the past six months, I've seen more and more really getting into the real estate space. And they're all doing something a bit different, but applying NFTs to real estate um, in their own kind of unique way. So whether they're using NFTs to enable crypto payments for homes, or maybe they're using NFTs to fractionalize real estate, um, or maybe they're using NFTs to create liquidity in a real estate market. You know, there's all uh, kind of ways that the NFTs are being leveraged to, to really transform that real estate market. Uh, when you look at Wall Street, and really, I think Wall Street adoption of NFTs is really going to be one of the most transformative ways, because NFTs are being applied to traditional trading businesses, traditional corporate finance businesses to transform how those are done. And in addition, the Wall Street firms are coming up with new ways to leverage NFTs to create new markets, right? And this is something I don't think we've ever seen before, really, but it's a new way of innovation uh, that's, that's coming on and it's going to continue to grow. In fashion, you know, Burberry is just one of the uh, high-end fashion companies that's using NFTs. And in fashion, it makes complete sense to apply NFTs to prove the validity uh, of a good. You know, if you buy a coat from Burberry or a bag from Louis Vuitton, you want to be able to prove, you know, that you didn't buy it at the flea market, you, you went to the store, right? And companies want people to be able to prove that as well. Uh, and NFTs are a great way to do that. Right, but so as, as adoption grows and use grows, there needs to be the right infrastructure in place, right? So uh, there's a lot of elements that need to be present for um, really adoption to thrive and grow, right? First, at Tron, we believe in a multi-chain world. So, you know, NFT use is definitely going to be multi-chain. Um, but these chains need to be able to interact with each other and consumers and companies need to be able to move assets across chain and they need to be able to do it safely and securely. I think right now, the biggest issue in cross chain is security, right? No one, no one wants to be in a wormhole situation um, and of, I read the other day, there was what, like 28 billion moved uh, across chain um, over the past year, let's say, a statistic I made up for this, um, and some three billion of it is, um, had some type of hack 
associated with it, right? And so that's roughly 5%, and that's far too high um, to really have a significant amount of business, right? You can't have um, commercial transactions being subject to that high a degree of um, fraud or hacking or whatever it might be. Um, and that it has to be fast and it has to be reliable. So I think we all understand what fast means, but reliable, um, you know, as these things proliferate and as their use becomes more widespread, you know, the networks can't go down. It can't, you know, a network can't go offline for six hours because it's congested, right? What's a little, a little kid at, at school? It's going to take the day off because it's not feeling well. Uh, that can't happen, right? And at Tron, you know, Tron, we, we run... 50% of Tether volume through our network every day, and 25% of global stablecoin volume. We don't get congested. We're, we show up for work every day. And then decentralized. You know, decentralization was how this all started, right? It's why we're all here. So and everyone in, in crypto, everyone in blockchain has a little bit of that, at least a little bit of rebel in them that they don't want to go back to a centralized world. Right? And we have to work as an industry to make sure that we do what we can to keep, it, to keep these new processes, to keep the evolution of the business as decentralized as we possibly can. And then lastly, but definitely not least, all of these things need to be inclusive and accessible to people throughout the world. Now, what, does that, what does accessible mean and inclusive mean? You're probably thinking anyone could get online. Sure, most people can, but not everyone has money for gas fees and to develop contracts, right? And gas fees can be pretty high. And from what I heard, you know, the new, the new consensus mechanism, the switch to proof of stake, isn't, isn't going to lower fees as much as people think. Uh, so that's going to be another barrier to climb, right? So let's talk about Tron now. So Tron leads in the blockchain trilemma. So when you think about decentralization, you think about scalability, you think about security, I think Tron's a leader in each of those areas, right? We're at the top, if not the top, in each of the areas. So uh, think about decentralization. We have a delegated proof of stake consensus model, which is pretty much um, as decentralized as you can become at this point. Um, Security, you know, we, we, Tron just doesn't get hacked, and it, it, we just, it doesn't happen. Um, and you think about speed, um, you know, we're fast and reliable. That's, that's why we have so much business, so, uh, so much stable coin business. Um, you know, we wouldn't have that amount of business, given our market cap. You know, we have a, we, we're like five and a half billion dollar market cap. Ethereum is, I don't know, 20 times that. But we, we actually have a greater market share of the business than Ethereum does. It's, it's because we have significant competitive advantages in cost, in speed, and reliability. Uh, so, you know, and when you get to cross-chain, we have an excellent cross-chain solution in BitTorrent chain, connect assets, um, move assets across chains securely, safely, quickly, and, you know, we just rolled out Ape NFT Marketplace uh, in April. And, you know, if I had a collection, I would want that collection to be available on as many chains as it possibly could. Um, and when you, when you list on your collection on Ape NFT, um, you automatically become, through BitTorrent chain, you're available on Ethereum, BNB Smart Chain, and Tron. And you're doing so at no listing fees and no transaction costs. So it, I think it makes a great deal of sense, from a business perspective at least, to um, be on Ape NFT market. So what else can I tell you? Well, I think it's time to wrap it up. There is a pool party going on at Margaritaville. Um, I've heard it's on multiple floors, and all drinks are free until 9 p.m., so I think most people will be heading over there. Uh, but before you go over there and 
have a few drinks and try to meet someone for the evening, um, you know, just remember this. Mass consumer adoption of NFTs is definitely going to happen. It's going to occur, and it's going to be driven, consumer adoption will be driven by commercial use. And we're going to see that flow through the market uh, until NFTs really aren't something new and different. They're just part of how business works. And there are multiple industries uh, that have multiple use cases within them. Uh, some of the most exciting are healthcare, financial services, all these traditional industries are going to be heavy, heavy users of NFTs, uh, as well as blockchain. We're going to get to the point where you don't see a blockchain project that, that is developed without NFTs involved. And then lastly, and arguably most importantly, Tron provides the infrastructure and the markets to support NFT adoption that can facilitate the growth uh, and the spread of NFTs. So with that, I will leave you. Thank you and good night. Everyone enjoy your time here and I appreciate you staying for this presentation. Goodbye.